Hey guys, Gameboy3800 here once again for another laptop review. Now today is a, a review about five years in the making. I started searching for this computer in 2011, finally got one in 2013, and then this computer died until a couple months ago I revived it. And until just a few days ago it was not fully functional. I will show you what I mean here. This has gone through four video cards. Here's the first one. This is the uh, first ATI Radeon uh, Mobility X800. This is the second one. This one displays a video, but uh, if you install the driver, it has artifacts everywhere. This one is just dead, uh, no video at all. Uh, this is a Radeon X700 I tried. I have no idea if it works or not, because it would not display video in this or the Eleanor M7700. Uh, this computer and that computer both use the same socket of one long connector and one short one. So they are compatible with each other. And then this third Radeon X800 would work and install the driver, but the driver itself would say that something went wrong and that uh, it had to stop. So I don't know if this driver here is working or if it's not. Either way, we, video card number 5 is in this, and it's not even an ATI card. Inside now is an NVIDIA GeForce Go a 7800 GTX 256 meg card. Uh, it used to be in the Alienware M7700 that I reviewed uh, last time. But I put it in this to see if it would work, and hey it does, so I left it in. Uh, as always with my laptop reviews, I go over the exterior first. There we go, now I can actually see what I'm uh, reviewing. Uh, the top is all plastic. It's a pretty thick screen though, so it's not going to have any give anywhere. Okay, let me see if I can show you. Yep, that is pretty strong. Uh, on the bottom here we have a similar story as the uh, Illinois we took a look at last time. It's got a clock, but it also shows like a CD thing and also caps lock and all that stuff there. Along with volume markers and the on the on function for the CD reader option. It could play CDs even with, when the computer was off. Uh, Sager and Clevo computers used to do that uh, back in 2004 to 2006, I'd like to say. So top is all plastic. Let's go over the right side next. And we have a DVD drive, a Firewire, phone line, USB, a speaker, Another USB and the power input. On the back side we have a uh, DVI dual link. We have a parallel port. Some more USBs and then a dedicated PS2 uh, port along with an S-Video port. And then a serial port and then some venting for the processor. The left side is a bit different. It's got an IR blaster, an SD card reader, another speaker, and a big hole where some card, some more card readers would go, or it could be for a floppy drive, but I don't have that. And beneath those are a Gigabyte LAN port, a PCM, MCIA, and then we make our way back to the front. Although you may have noticed a wire sticking out. What is this? Well, this is a USB. Uh, that is there. It's there so that I can connect it to the back of the computer and have the system fan running. I will show you what I mean here. You probably can't see this too well, but uh, there are four fans on this machine. Uh, these two are for the processor, and this is the system fan. The header for this fan has died on the motherboard, so what I did was I rewired it to a USB thing, and now I just have to plug it into the back or to the side over there where a USB connection is, and the system fan will run and it will make it so that the system will not, will not overheat. 
And then this a last fan is for the video card. And it all shoots out the back. It's fine. It's not annoyingly going out the side. Or the video card's not beneath the wrist when gaming like on the old Alienware. I think this is a better design computer. But who knows. I have had four broken video cards in this. So maybe something went wrong. Anyways, let's go ahead and open up the screen. And get ready for something weird here. That is the touchpad. It is a circle. Where the touchpad itself is more of a half oval. Unless you... Like, I've never seen a laptop do this before with this shape of touchpad. It's stupid, I think. Like, unless you really need to do these perfect arches every time, I think this is stupid. These mouse buttons, however, are pretty good. And it's got a dedicated scroll wheel, which works exactly like it does on an external mouse. You can scroll up and down and click it in. We're going to take a look at the keyboard next. Alright, it's pretty good. Uh, it's a little bit worn and used, so it's a tad slippery. I think if it was new, though, it would be pretty good. The keys are okay. They're acceptable. Uh, up at the top here, we have all of our media keys and Wi-Fi buttons and stuff like that. And then above that is another speaker. And then we get to the screen and webcam. Webcam I've never tested, but I assume it is identical to the one on the Eleanor that we saw last time. Because these computers both came out at around the same time. And... Yep, now this machine has a dead battery, so it has to be plugged in at all times. And uh, I was stupid in the past and didn't give it a long enough USB, so I actually had to get a USB extender in order to use the system fan. And trying to plug it in from this angle is quite annoying, actually. What goes where? I already tried that direction. It's doing the thing where you have to try it in 18 different directions to get it in, in there at once. There we go. So with it finally plugged up, you can see that we get a small light down here. There we go. Make a shadow to do it. Now this computer will be slightly annoying because that will always have to be on in order to keep it from overheating. I will go ahead and let it boot up and tell you the full specs as it does. And this has an Intel Pentium 4 uh, 570 processor running at 3.8 gigahertz, one meg of cache. And it's got two gigabytes of DDR1 memory uh, that is the biggest limiting factor, I think, because it runs pretty good, but having only two gigabytes of system memory is detrimental, even on a 32-bit Windows system. But, yep, yeah, once it starts up and is running, uh, all the system fans seem to calm down except for the one that's wired to USB. And yep, here we are. I have some games loaded up that we can try to play. Because this does have a dedicated video card, we can see how well it does today. Just like we did before. But yep, the video card, being a GTX 7800 mobile card, has 256 megabytes of memory. And that seems to do pretty good, even for being in this system that was always ATI. And the screen is actually really nice. It is 1680 by 1050. Uh, the Alienware only had uh, 1440 by 900, so this is a higher resolution, higher resolution screen while being smaller. So it looks a lot sharper as well. And I do believe it has more accurate colors to boot. So we have a few games on here, and we will see how they play. And. My first complaint is that the speakers are not loud at all. Like, here it is at max volume. Yeah. 
not too great there. But yep, uh, let's get into a game and see how it does. Okay, here we are in Bioshock 1, not remastered. Now we are running at uh, 1280 by 800. And quality is on unseeable because of all the light. And I know seeing the screen like this is weird, but it's like that so that you can see the numbers as they actually are on the top right. Uh, anyways, we're going to have to uh, see what the video quality is like after we start. And then after we do that, we will, we will judge the performance as such. So this computer came out in late 2004, December 2004. So... Uh, this game being 2007, would have been three years old, so it would have represented the computer at the end of its life cycle, originally. Nowadays it is way, way past its life cycle. we just going to do this cutscene, and I think it's going to play flaw flaw uh, flawlessly because it's supposed to. They told me. So, yep. you're special. You were born to do great things. You know what? They were right. So we will play until we first get into Rapture. And that will be the baseline. Alright, I believe now we can go ahead and see graphics quality on custom. Hmm. Let's try running it at high settings for now. And resume. If we can't run it at high, then we will downgrade to medium. The speakers are being weird. Uh, the Eleanor did the same thing too. It must be a sound from the game actually being weird more than anything. Now we have we now have patrol and we're swimming through fire at 25 frames per second. Although this isn't the most accurate representation of this game, so we will get to rapture and see how it performs there. Now this computer does have a big benefit to when it first came out in that the video card is much newer. This would have had uh, an NVIDIA 6000 series, but right now it's got a 7000. And a high settings at uh, 800p, uh, it's doing pretty well. See that the door closes. And now that there's no lights anymore, we're going to walk down here and walk into the mysterious thing that is now in front of us. Without questioning anything, we're just going to go ahead and close that and go down below. I would have waited for rescue. Like that lighthouse had to have been known, so they would have probably guessed it would that they could look around there. I would have just waited for rescue, but nope, I had to go down into the bottom of the, of the sea and almost die a hundred times. I am Andrew Ryan. The can is picking question. up Andrew's face there. Is a man not entitled to the sweat of his brow? I guess that shows it's somewhat no, working. This is the man in Washington that belongs to the poor. No, says the yeah, man that belongs to the poor. No, says the man that belongs to the poor. I started doing a playthrough on my channel of the remastered version, but... I 
uh, then I did the Can You Use an Old Laptop in 2016 series. And the, and the old Alienware laptop I was using could not play it, it just crashed that startup. So here's Rapture in all 19 frames of its glory. So, uh, Bioshock 1 is not a game that requires super high FPS to not die, <laughs> like CSGO. Like, I would not trust this computer to do CSGO, and I'm not going to test it. So as soon as we get the wrench and kill a guy or two, that will be the end of this. And then we will move on to one more game. So here we are loading up the first real level. Welcome to Rapture. I cannot believe we spent six minutes at this game already. It doesn't feel that long, but then again we did have to watch an intro. can save at any time from the options menu. Saving content, awesome. It is somewhat working. And now we're at five frames. Hmm. Why are we at five frames per second? I'm going to try turning down some settings. Oh god. Either one of two things are happening. It is overheating, or it's running out of memory. Let's try at that resolution, see what happens. Okay. It was running out of memory. I'm going to go one more down so that it looks slightly less contorted. And now we will get back to the game. Uh, what resolution was that? 1024 by 768 was actually a very common resolution to run back in the day, so I guess we will see how it actually plays. like it is now, you must really push the cards, so having to lower the resolution uh, was, nece was necessary. Alright, we're 
tempered down the frames again, so it seems like the Bioshock uh, could not be too great. And I think what is actually happening is that the system memory is being maxed out as well. Let me alt tab out as soon as uh, we hit accept changes. Let's see how much of the system memory we are using. The test manager shows that we are using, yep, almost all of its system memory. So just as I thought, um, it is severely limited by its maximum capacity of memory. So we're going to close Bioshock 1 here. Okay, I guess that's not going to work, so I'm going to have to close it through here instead. There we go. And even so, we are still maxing out our memory. This computer is not connected online right now, so I have... Okay, now it's starting to go down. Uh, this computer is not connected online, so I actually have no idea why it's using all of its memory. Like, it's not downloading anything. It says the Bioshock is still open, somehow. Handle is invalid. Well, that's safe. Okay, there we go. We're back down to one gigabyte of system memory use, but... That is the biggest Achilles heel of these old Pentium 4 machines, using DDR1 memory in instead of DDR2. Because I believe you can only have 2 gigs of memory. And on that note, I think I'm going to go ahead and end this review here. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the lights again. Zoom back out. And there we are. This, this review has been a long time coming. I will be doing more videos featuring this old computer. But as for this review, uh, it may have been great for the time. Having two gigs of memory may have seemed like, wow, what will you ever need that much memory for way back then? But nowadays it is very, very clearly too little. The only thing installed on this computer is Steam and a few games. Like there's no other big programs that could be running in the background that could use it all, all up. So... Whether it be the uh, Windows 7 being unoptimized for DDR1, or low memory in general, or the computer's fault, I guess that's about it. I'm going to go ahead and shut it down now. And by the way, this was running on uh, Intel 80 gig SSD, of all things. So it does have pretty fast boot up and shutdown times for what it's worth. And I will say one last thing, that on a Sager branded one, uh, this circle thing would not be here. Instead, there would be a little screen that you could customize and put your own picture on. Uh, you would modify that through the serial port on the back. And I think that would have been really cool to see on this machine, but nope, this is a Widow PC branded machine instead of a Sager one. And here you can see the Black Widow in all of its glory. Anyways, that is it. Five years down the road, and this review is done. So if you enjoyed this old machine being shown in fully working condition, or as good as it can work, then please go ahead and leave a like, favorite, comment, share, and of course don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks, Gameboy. I will see you in the future with another video. Goodbye.